The high priests who were there with the Sanhedrin that day and Caiaphas in particular were they guilty of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is a particularly serious sin which appears in the Gospels. This sin has a very precise notion by saying this, any sin, any blasphemy which you will pronounce will be forgiven either in this world or in the next. If you blaspheme the Son of Man, therefore man or the Christ himself, who has the appearance of a man, is a human, but is God-made man, you will be forgiven. But if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, it will never be forgiven, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. What is this sin against the Holy Spirit? When we understand the Trinity, we understand this, this sin more easily. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is the reciprocal love between the Father and the Son. Now, in the Holy Spirit, power is attributed to the Father because it is from Him that everything comes from. The Father is power of God. Similarly, the Son is knowledge of God because he is identical, nothing other than the Father who knows, understands himself. Uh, results. Since we are created in the image of God, when an act comes out of two things within us, number one, perfect power, we are in perfect control of our being, we are not overtaken by anger nor weaknesses, etc. It could be said that our sin proceeds and quotes from the self-control, therefore from the Father, it is a sin against the Father. 2. When there is, on the contrary, witness, when we are perfectly lucid about what we do totally until the eternal consequences, we will call that a sin. When there is a ignorance, precisely, on the contrary, a sin against the Son, a sin of ignorance, when there is a mitigating circumstance to be forgiven, just as weakness is forgiven. When there is perfect self-control and perfect knowledge, then comes a voluntary action called sin against the Holy Spirit. This sin is so clear-cut, lucid, that it will be maintained for eternity before Christ. These sins are rare on earth. They occur to trained Christians, also to Jewish theologians, who know exactly certain things about God and who nevertheless lucidly begin to combat God. So the question that arises, are those who condemn Jesus, are they guilty of such blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? It is difficult to say. There is no anti-canonization in the church that signifies a declaration that such a man is in hell. This would be the case if we could ever say publicly that Caiaphas, for example, had sinned against the Holy Spirit, since, as so it seems, he will never have repented. Thirty years later, when he died, seeing Christ in all his glory, he will have simply said, I know very well that you are the Christ. Leave me alone. I don't give a damn about your message. The total freedom cannot be recovered. We cannot understand what this means for Caiaphas, and I will prove it in the following way. There is another analogous sin in the history of the Church. It was Monsignor Pierre Cochon, Bishop of Lisieux, who condemned Joan of Arc. No doubt he had desired to be Archbishop. So perhaps he also wanted to get along with the English invader. This occurred during the Hundred Years' War, in the 15th century, Joan of Arc had answered perfectly. She had been quite clear at the age of 21 with her answers. This had been a high-level theology, but the bishop wanted to condemn her and he succeeded in so doing. For this, he set a trap for her. He forced her to eat a decomposing fish, then he forced her her to submit to our judges. Therefore, she could no longer appeal to the Pope, so she was under his power. He had promised her in exchange to have her placed in a women's prison. There she will be able to dress herself as a woman, but he lied to her and he had her put her in a man's prison with his man's clothes. 
she had been dressed as a man and he came to see that she has fallen prey to the man in prison and to sin. He burned her alive on the same day. The snare had been unstable. This was Bishop Monsignor Cochon in a state of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Difficult to know because toward the end of his life was rather that of an admirable bishop. He would build everywhere in his bishop's diocese sanctuaries to the Blessed Virgin. Even so, that doesn't mean very much, perhaps in appearance, always making himself look good as a bishop, since at the time everyone had been nominally Catholic. Maybe, maybe not, so we do not know for sure outwardly the sin he had committed seems very like blasphemy against the holy spirit especially since it is accompanied by hypocrisy the bishop had forced the marchand to a clerk to write lies concerning joan of arc which the clerk had refused to do it had been an act of heroism not to do so on the clerk's behalf he should be canonized as patron of the clerks this clerk Marchand, who had been at the trial of Joan of Arc. In short, we must pray for these high priests. We do not know what their intentions may have been. However, we must hope that they were just moments of weakness, of revenge, of vanity, of the search of to keep their power, or even an ultimately zeal. As they say, so the people do not suffer the punishments of the romance, perhaps.